Hey guys, my name is Amy Jane and welcome back to my channel. This is part three of a series titled The Truth About Cholesterol. If you haven't already, go check out part one of this series where I talk about cholesterol myths, the dangers of cholesterol lowering drugs like statins, and my dietary recommendations. Part two expands upon the flaws of cholesterol science and how we were misled in research. I'm a registered dietitian, and in today's video, I'm going to explain why total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol blood tests are not consistently reliable in determining our heart disease risk, and instead provide you with a list of blood tests that are. Most doctors begin to assess their patient's heart disease risk by performing a blood test to determine total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and HDL cholesterol. Your total cholesterol number is the amount of LDL cholesterol plus HDL cholesterol found in your blood. Most of us were taught that LDL is the bad kind that should be kept low and HDL is the good kind that should, should be kept high. But this belief is now outdated by advancements in technology and further research. There are actually subcategories of both LDL and HDL that might be more important. In this video, we're going to focus on the subcategories of LDL cholesterol. Within LDL cholesterol, there are two types of molecules, LDL-A and LDL-B. This refers to the cholesterol size. There's still a lot of research going on in this area, but the current belief is that LDL-A is a large, fluffy, harmless molecule that carries out necessary duties in the body. And on the other hand, LDL-B is a small, dense, hard molecule that promotes atherosclerosis or heart disease. These are the dangerous ones because they're more likely to become oxidized and cause inflammation. And that cascade of events leads to plaque buildup in the arteries. Knowing your LDL particle size is very important because this means that your traditional LDL cholesterol test number could be what's considered high, but not be of much concern because it's mostly LDL A particles, the fluffy harmless kind. And on the flip side, if your LDL cholesterol number seems low and is considered healthy, you might still be at risk if it's composed of mostly LDL B particles, the small angry kind. Regardless of your total cholesterol and LDL number, a blood test determining mostly LDL-A pattern is considered positive and points to low risk for a heart event. Another important aspect, possibly more important, is the particle number. Cholesterol is carried around by lipoproteins such as LDL. And in this picture, the truck represents the LDL and the sand represents the amount of cholesterol. So in this example, let's say that each truck carries about 1,000 pounds of sand. Your cholesterol number would be 5,000 pounds and your particle number would be five. Research suggests that a high particle number is a stronger indicator for heart disease risk. Thankfully, there are simple blood tests to help us determine this information, which I will talk about in just a moment. Total HDL and a simple LDL and HDL blood test are vague and don't provide us with much meaningful data or information about our health and heart disease risk we need to dig a little bit deeper and know the particle size, pattern A or pattern B, and particle number, how many of those trucks were carrying cholesterol. More research needs to be conducted on these subcategories of LDL, but knowing this extra bit of information seems promising. Plus, research doesn't always support high total cholesterol or high LDL cholesterol as being strong indicators for heart disease. There have been studies within groups of people who experienced a heart attack and some had low cholesterol, and some had high cholesterol. So simple total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol tests were not as reliable as we thought in determining our risk for having a heart attack. Now let's briefly go over blood tests that are very useful in determining your heart disease risk. First is the NMR lipoprofile blood test. This measures LDL particle size and LDL particle number as I have just discussed. I highly recommend getting this test. Next is your triglyceride to HDL ratio. This is determined by dividing your triglycerides by your HDL. Using US metrics of milligrams per deciliter, ideally this number would be below two. So for example, if your triglycerides are 80 and your HDL is 50, your ratio score would be 1.6. Next is C-reactive protein, better known as CRP. This indicates inflammation in your body and is directly associated with cardiovascular health. Ideally, this number would be less than 0.8 milligrams per deciliter. Another is your A1C. This test informs you of your average blood sugar in the past three to four months. This is a much better indicator than a simple fasting blood glucose test because your glucose can change drastically day to day and even hour to hour. A1C will help you assess your risk of diabetes, of heart disease, and of other health issues. 
Homocysteine is another important test. Evidence shows that elevated levels contribute to heart disease by reducing the flexibility of blood vessels, and it also makes blood platelets stickier, which slows blood flow. Optimal levels are between seven and nine micromoles per liter. Next is LPA. Elevated levels of this molecule indicate artery damage and inflammation. LPA leads to plaque formation and promotes the formation of blood clots, which is a perfect storm for a stroke or heart attack. Last, I wanted to mention a coronary calcium scan. Calcium makes up a portion of the plaque that accumulates in our arteries, so this test will show you how much coronary calcification has occurred. Ideally, you want a score of zero to 10. Keep in mind, you don't need to get all of these blood tests, although that would be great. But there are some companies such as LabCorp or Quest that offer packages where you can get most of these in one blood test. Again, if you haven't already, go check out part one and two of this series linked below. Now I'm curious to know if you have heard of any of these blood tests or had any of them done for yourself. I would love to hear your experience in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of content and want to see more, let me know by liking this video and subscribing. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you next time.